So in this video, we're going to break down the component cost of FileMaker Cloud. And then in the next video, we're going to dive into a detailed conversation of how you can save 50 to 70 percent over the default cost that you see come up in this video. So this is really a two-part video here. So to get things rolling, let me just tell you that there are three billable components that you will see in your monthly or annual Amazon bill. And once again, I'm not talking about the FileMaker server software. I consider that really a separate billable item. So it might get mixed into your Amazon bill depending on how you purchase FileMaker Cloud. But really, FileMaker server software is a bill that we have always had. It's a bill that has not changed and the cost of the FileMaker server software is the same. What's new for us with FileMaker Cloud is how we're going to see Amazon's infrastructure or their virtual servers that we're going to rent. How are we going to see those bills? And up front, let me just tell you real quick, you're going to see the cost of the virtual server. You're going to see the hard drive storage space that we are going to burn as part of that server. And we're also going to see in a very ancillary sort of way the cost of the data that we move up and down from the server. All three of those elements are going to combine into one price that we'll see on a monthly bill or on an annual bill from Amazon. So let's dive into this. Now first off, it's important to understand that FileMaker Incorporated has identified a set of virtual servers or what Amazon calls instances that would work well as a FileMaker server. Amazon has a tremendous number of pre-configured instances with different types of configurations that you as a developer can choose from when setting up a virtual server. There are small servers that are lightweight that don't cost very much. There are medium sized servers, there are jumbo sized servers, and then there are some extreme servers that you can pay quite a bit for, but they really do a lot of work. So it's important to understand that while there are a tremendous number of instances that Amazon has set up, FileMaker has identified different sizes of instances or virtual servers that you can choose from to fill a wide variety of needs. Now these servers start as small as a single CPU server with only two gigs of memory. And that's really pretty minimal. Now it's important to understand that your biases about what a CPU can do and the amount of memory it can do are based upon probably your work on your computer or laptop. Understand that you have been historically using the Mac OS or the Windows OS. And these operating systems burn a lot of processing power just to get them running. So it's important to remind you that FileMaker went out of their way to set up FileMaker Cloud to use the Linux operating system, which A, is super cheap, and B, is super lightweight in terms of it not burning unnecessary processing just to get it running. So you can get a lot farther with the amount of memory you have and a lot farther with the CPUs that you might be tempted to need. So, for example, if you had a four core, 16 gigabyte server on Windows, the Linux equivalent in terms of power and processing might be a machine with half those statistics. Maybe instead of four cores, it has two cores, and maybe instead of 16 gigs, it has eight gigs. I don't know exactly where the conversion is, and it's really subjective, but the important takeaway is they can get a lot farther with Linux than you can with Mac or Windows for a given set of resources. Now the next thing to understand is that your Amazon costs are regulated by effectively three things. The first item we just talked about is the size of the virtual server that you are effectively renting from Amazon. Once again, Amazon calls this an instance and the size of that instance is a big component of how much your monthly bill could be or your annual bill. The second component to the overall cost is the amount of storage that you are using. And when you set up FileMaker Cloud initially, you're going to be presented with choices for the size of your hard drive between 40 gigabytes and 120 gigabytes. Now I can tell you is that if you do select 120 gigabytes, then you'll be presented with options larger than 120. So this technology is not limited to 120. They're just limiting the choices that you see on screen right now. Now this storage is really cheap. It's basically a dollar per month for 10 gigabytes. So that's the easy way of doing the math. So 40 gigabytes is $4 a month. 60 is $6 a month. 120 gigabytes is going to be $12 a month. 
So in general, it's pretty inexpensive. Also understand that this is SSD-based storage, which is solid-state drives, which are the high-performance drives that most people have been going to in the recent years. Now, this EBS storage that you're buying, regardless of the size, is simply there to store your one main live master copy of your database. This storage does not include the backups that FileMaker Cloud creates. The 40 gigabytes of storage or 60 gigabytes of storage or whatever you decide to go with is only for your main copy of your database, including any containers that you have that are remote. So if you have a 100 megabyte database and a gig or two of remote containers, that one master copy, that one live copy is what lives on this EBS storage. Also what lives on this block of storage are the configuration files that are specific to your server, any plugins that are specific to your server, and any additional configuration information that's really specific to your server. All that lives in this EBS storage. Now what's important to understand is FileMaker Incorporated by using the Amazon data center and the underlying technology that's been maturing here for actually a number of years, they're able to take advantage of some really efficient backup technology. So the takeaway here is that your EBS storage contains your one live primary database and all your configuration files. The backups are written to a different area of Amazon. Now this is all abstracted from you and it's all managed automatically in the background. It's important to understand that only the data that actually changes is backed up. And when it's backed up every 20 minutes, it's written to S3. S3 is Amazon Simple Storage Service, which basically, from a layman's perspective, is kind of like a giant FTP server. Now, if you're a technical person, you get into Amazon S3, you'll know that that analogy is not perfect. But for the vast majority of basic to intermediate developers, the analogy of S3 being like this giant FTP cloud storage space is really a good analogy for you to go with. So understand that that's what FileMaker Cloud backs up to. In fact, when FileMaker Cloud runs the backup, it actually asks Amazon to do the backup for them. So the backup process that's running is really one that Amazon created, that Amazon has QA'd and tested, and it's highly efficient. Once again, it only backs up the bits of the data that have changed. It doesn't back up the entire file. If parts of the file have changed, just those bits are written to the backup. So if you have a one gigabyte FileMaker file, and you change 20 records in it, or 200K worth of data, only 200K will be written to the backup, not another entire copy of the database. And so that's a whole level of efficiency greater than what we have currently with the Mac and Windows Server. So understand that that's where the backups are written. And we cover more about backups in other videos. But the reason this is important now is that you need to figure out how to calculate the amount of space you need. 40 gigabytes for a lot of people will get them a very long way in terms of what they need. So in summary, the EBS storage is the amount that we're reserving right here. And also, what's being tacked onto the bill in a very minor sort of way is the amount of S3 backup storage that we are using. And when I first saw this, it threw me a little bit, but just understand that the 40 gigabytes is for our live files and that we're going to pay for that 40 gigabytes every month regardless. And then on top of this, at a very minor level, Amazon is going to burn additional S3 storage to make sure that all our backups are being backed up and saved. And so, of course, we have the 20-minute backups, which overwrite after a week, and the preserved backups. So understand that our bill will be 40 gigabytes or 60 or 80 or whatever we pick, plus the amount of S3 storage that we have utilized. Once again, that depends upon the activity of the database. So once again, it's $4 for 40 gigabytes, and then you might have another gigabyte or two of backup. So that's another 20 or 30 cents or maybe a dollar. So once again, the S3 backups will result in additional charges to our account, but we're talking about pretty minimal incidental charges. So once again, bringing this together, our Amazon costs are the instance itself, the amount of storage we burn per month, and also the amount of data that's transferred across the wire between our users and the server. And that cost is really minimal. 
for almost anything that you do unless you're some sort of video streaming company and actually if you're watching this video then understand that in terms of the cost streaming video is where it gets the most expensive but even that on Amazon is super cheap like pennies so really the biggest cost of the three components is the instance itself and then a distant second is the amount of storage it used and the third component is almost so trivial that I would just give it a dollar or two a month maybe max and that is your data transfer fees I can't imagine a single customer that we have out of hundreds of customers which would burn more than three or four or five dollars at the most per month most customers will only burn a dollar if that so it's pretty minimal in terms of the data transmission fees that goes on now the reason of course Amazon charges for this is that they get billed as part of their internet connection fees that they have to pay out for data coming in and out of their data centers and so they want the people who push a lot of data up and down to actually pay more which makes sense so now that we understand the cost is made up of this instance itself the storage itself and the data transfer let's talk about saving money the area that you can actually make a measurable impact in is saving on the cost of the instance and of course part of that is evaluating the instance size that you might need based upon the number of users that are going to be accessing the solution at one time so what I have on screen right here is a website that is Amazon's uh, simply monthly calculator it allows us to come to this page and then in the left we can select Amazon EC2 we can also select the data center that we want to review and look at in terms of the cost now while this website is Amazon's kind of default tool I'm gonna to recommend that you jump over to kind of a third-party website called EC2 instances dot info and this basically takes all that crazy data that Amazon was giving you and makes it much more digestible now understand that this gives us the complete list of all the instances or sizes of servers that we can get from Amazon and of course hourly cost is really kind of goofy that blows my mind I like to see everything as a monthly cost so we kind of get a comparison almost all software these days is is regulated by monthly cost even if you pay it for it annually people calculate it monthly so I'm gonna do it that way so then of course you see in here you've got you know fourteen hundred bucks a month and some crazy gnarly servers up here that don't apply to us so this is really handy and it has the latest prices on it the problem is it shows us all these instances that we don't necessarily need or have access to with our FileMaker Cloud so what we did is we created a little FileMaker file that you can download and these are the instances that FileMaker has approved for use and these are the prices as of today now if you're looking at this in six months maybe you want to check the prices and hopefully we can get this uh, set up so we can press a button and update it that would be very cool uh, that being said this is a great tool for showing us the different sizes of instances that we can choose from and we can see the approximate pricing for these various instances understand that for a small group of people maybe one or two three people four people maybe you can get away with this uh, t2 small a group of five people maybe you can get away with this t2 medium and then of course you can scale up the instance that I've been playing with quite a bit is a c4 extra large which is probably good for 20 or 30 people I would think it just depends on what your database is doing it gets into the whole conversations of database efficiency and scalability etc so the kind of instance that you need is going to be totally dependent upon a the number of users that are hitting it at one time right actually banging away on it and two what your database file is doing is it moving lots of images are they just typing data are they doing finds are they doing unindexed uh, searches complex sorts I mean all those things put different loads on the server and you will want to purchase a server that is appropriate for the job that you're asking it to do so as you can see this is the Linux on demand pricing here this column here is the pricing that FileMaker actually quotes now keep in mind is that there are all sorts of discount prices we can get and we're gonna dive into that conversation in the next video